feel like I'm straddling this mofo. Yeehaw! <laughs> okay. Well, gamers, it's that time of week again where we sit down and we grab our favourite drink, whether it be the sweet, sweet Bundy Red, or it be Coke, or it just be water, or cordial, or beer, or even bourbon, scotch, whatever it is your favourite drink is, we sit down and we say, here's to the games we love, here's to the games that don't love us, stuff that, here's to the shit that we'll never probably play. Cheers, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, YouTube proudly presents to you its number one, I think, gaming collecting show in the world! I am Mad Mikey, and this is the shit I'll probably never play! Mad Mikey Gaming. G'day all you mad gamers, I'm Mad Mikey, I bloody come from the land down under, and if you don't know or you're new to this show, basically it's called The Shit I'll Probably Never Play because, let's face it, I can't play all these games and I probably never will, but I, it doesn't stop me from collecting <laughs> collecting them anyway. Uh, but this week, it's been a while since I've actually put out a lot of this stuff, I've just been either having medical issues where I can't sort of come or I've been sick and not able to talk... Or I just haven't had any games to pick up because I'm on a bit of a budget at the moment. But guys, uh, I've got a nice collection of things to show this week. I uh, actually got quite a lot of free games, so that was pretty cool. But uh, guys, if you like the video, don't forget, I know you got two thumbs, I only want one, so don't forget to hit that like button. And while you're at it, why not give it a subscribe if you don't already? And to my subscribers, I love you guys. So, uh, we'll start off with the free games that I got over the last couple of weeks, because uh, it was pretty awesome. So, just firstly, a bit of a shout out to the Assassin's Guild of Australia. Uh, I actually met those guys back at PAX last year, where I was actually just walking around, and I saw these Assassin's guys out on the outside taking photos and everything. I was like, oh, I wonder if they've got a Connor over there, because I was cosplaying as Connor, the most under understood, misunderstood character of the bunch and I sort of walked up there and I was on the inside they were on the outside I was like looking like oh they don't have a Connor and I just sort of put my hand up onto the window and then <laughs> just the funniest thing the whole group of them just came up and they were all touching their hands and they're like come on come on so I went out had some photos with them met the guys uh they were so welcoming uh if you if you don't know who they are they're, they're basically the official uh cosplay guild for Ubisoft in Australia. They they do a lot of great stuff. Uh, they're very welcoming whether you actually make your own cosplay or you buy your own cosplay or you just love Assassin's Creed. They want to talk to you because uh, that's obviously something that everybody and a lot of people have in common. So it's going to be no surprise that the first bunch of games I got and it is a bit of a shout out to the L Guild leader, Kaz. Uh, he posted a couple of weeks ago that he, he was finished with a couple of the games. And they were free to a good home. And I even offered to pay for the postage, but nah, nah, he didn't want any of that. So I was quite fortunate to get quite a few of those games. Firstly, uh, the original Assassin's Creed, the one that started all on the PlayStation 3. Uh, just keep in mind, the, these bunch are all on PS3 because I don't have a lot of them on the PlayStation 3. I've got them on Xbox, uh, PC, everywhere else except for the PlayStation. I do have a couple of them, but not all of them. Uh... But this is the game that started it all and spelled the demise of the Prince of Persia series for a while. I'm still not over that, Ubisoft. But uh, in hindsight, 2020 Vision uh, is such a great, great thing. This wasn't the best of the bunch, but I actually really enjoyed it. I put a lot of time into this game. I didn't go around and collect all the flags or anything like that. But I love the I love the concept of this game that it was the hunt. You had to take down all the Templars and everything, and sort of just getting the info as repetitive as it was. It was still a bunch of fun. It was such a new game, and I had a ball with this game. Uh, funny enough, this was the only one that was actually done in 720p. But let's not hold that against it because it was it is an old game. When was it? Back in 2007. Jeez, it's 10 years. Happy 10 year anniversary, Assassin's Creed 1. You sly dog, you. You're 10. You're in double figures. Woo! And then, then to round it up, uh, there was the Ezio Alditore trilogy of Assassin's Creed 2, uh, Brotherhood, and Revelations. Again, all free. I'll just. 
I love you, Kaz. I love you, man. And uh, look, Assassin's Creed 2, I still, this is one of my favorite gaming memories. Like, uh, there wasn't actually a midnight launch for it. I don't know why, or it was just the store that I was picking it up from. But uh, they they opened up early uh, for people, so I was up that I was up there at eight o'clock in the morning. Picked it up, got home at nine o'clock, and just started playing through till probably about six or seven that night. Like full on nonstop, no food, no drinks, nothing. Just I was engrossed in this game and how awesome it was. The storytelling, Ezio is such a charismatic character. You couldn't help but sort of just fall in love with the character. And um, I only really stopped because uh, Mrs. Mikey came home and, of course, she wanted to eat. Who wants to friggin' eat when you're playing Assassin's Creed 2? And uh, then she wanted to do a bit of shopping, so I did the, the only thing that uh, Mr. Mikey could do. And I went out shopping and uh, just helped out the little lady. Uh, but then I got we got home at probably about 9, nine o'clock that night because it was a late night shopping. And I then proceeded to play until about three o'clock in the morning. So uh, that was a, I had a really awesome day with that. And I didn't even scratch the surface of that game. Uh, just still to this day, one of my favorite games. I've got, as I said, I've got the, all of these on other consoles. I've even got the new one, uh, the Ezio Trilogy remastered on the Xbox One. So I really love these games. And obviously these two just sort of rounded it up. Uh, Brotherhood was just sort of where Ezio started to take over the assassins and sort of make it his own. Yeah, he ended up sort of taking over and there was a big twist at the end, but in case of spoilers, we won't say anything about that. And then Revelations just sort of brought a full circle where he's sort of looking back at the assassins and learning about um, Altair, who was the original assassins in the first one. And all in all, really lovely game. This one wasn't really... Uh, as well received as the other two. Brotherhood 2, I think, is critically acclaimed as being the best of the Assassins. Uh, but this one still holds a dear place in my heart. And also, being part of uh, the official guild of Australia for the Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft uh, will generally throw out some freebies our way. Uh, they pass them on to Kaz and... Look, to his credit guy, as I said, you will never meet a more nicer guy... Than this bloke. I've spent a bit of time with him. I actually went to the uh, Assassin's Creed movie premiere with him and a couple of them. We all got dressed up. It was a really awesome night. Uh, but uh, Ubisoft uh, recognizes them as the, the, the main guild in Australia. And as I said, they throw a couple of things out. So he just sort of put on display all these things. Uh, said, guys, uh, this is what they've sent us. Free to give away. Who wants one? And I scored me a Connor. Uh, don't ask me why. I, like, I, I think I can say why, but Connor, he's got to be my favorite character. Uh, I, I just, I feel that I have some sort of connection to the bloke. Uh, just the fact that like he comes from nowhere and, but yet he, he does what he can for his people. He starts a community, which we're really trying to do here over at Mad Mikey Gaming. And he, he just, he does whatever it takes to sort of look after his friends because they are basically his family. Uh, I don't know if you guys can all see, but I do have a plethora of Connor uh, statues over there. And this one's just on the cake. Uh, so thank you, Ubisoft. Thank you, Kaz. And thank you, the Assassin's Guild of Australia. And just to round up uh, the last free games that I did get over the last couple of weeks, a friend of mine, uh, Steve, he had the unfortunate thing happen to him. He went overseas with his 3DS, uh, as you do, because you want to play and travel, those sorts of things. And on the way back, he left his uh, Nintendo 3DS in the plane. So he called up, tried to find it. Of course, they bloody didn't find it, did they? So he had all these... Uh, well, now he's got his uh, Nintendo Switch. So he doesn't really have the need for a 3DS. So he's got all these 3DS games and I sort of saw him and I said, oh, you, you should be pl playing that game. Oh, what about the new Fire Emblem? We were talking the other week and he's like, I don't have a 3DS, dude. Don't you remember? I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. He's like, look, if, if there's any of those 3DS games, go grab them. So I managed to score uh, Super Mario... 3D Land, which I actually have never played. I do have uh, Mario, the one on the Wii U, which I really enjoy. And I've only ever heard really, really good things about this game. 
Uh, so whether I'll play it or not, that's why it's called shit I'll probably never play. I would like to say that I probably would play it uh, because uh, Mario games, and especially these ones, have been really fantastic over the years. And yeah, look, free. I'll take two. And the other one was uh, The Legend of Zelda and Majora's Mask 3D. Now, I've actually got this one digitally, uh, but obviously having the physical, you know how we roll around here. Let's get physical, physical games. I really love this. Uh, this was one of the first Zelda games that I did really get into. I did the first two sort of area dungeons and then I sort of gave up because it got a bit too hard. I couldn't work out how to bloody jump a fence. I couldn't find a horse. That's what I needed. And I tried to find a horse. I couldn't find a horse. So, of course, I stopped. But I don't normally play the 3DS that much. Uh, honestly, like the only game that and the reason that I did originally get the 3DS was for Resident Evil Revelations. And we all know how that went. It's now out on everything. That's the only game that I've actually finished on the 3DS and I absolutely loved it. Uh, it's even better now with the new uh, 3DS XL, new, well, the new 3DS XL uh, with the gyro and everything. So you don't need that big chunky attachment so that you can play it. But um, yeah, this is a, I really love this game. It's, it's sometimes said that this is actually the best Zelda game there is out there. So I was pretty stoked with that one. In a mission. Now, on to the games that I actually bought over the last couple of weeks. These two games only came in this week, so they, were, they just scraped in. Uh, the first one, which I'm actually really wrapped about, because if you know me, if you're a long-time watcher or subscriber, you know I love my Dreamcast. And I got Crazy Taxi 2, baby! Uh, I've actually got the first one, and I've admittedly, I've never played the second one. So I'm actually pretty wrapped to play this. I've got a, my young apprentice coming over tonight. We're going to play one of the other games, but we won't get to that one just yet uh, tonight. But he, I love getting onto the Dreamcast with this kid. Just, just sort of seeing him see it for the first time and being amazed at actually what the Dreamcast is, especially with the VGA adapter. It makes these games look crisp. It looks amazing. This is actually VGA compatible. Bonus. Uh, but I love the crazy... I used to spend so much money on the Crazy Taxi at the arcades. And uh, when it came out on consoles, that was amazing. I think I've, I played three on the Xbox, which to me, it wasn't really the same as the first one. Obviously, the first one had the soundtrack uh, to um, of The Offspring. And just starting up the game and hearing, yeah, 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 yeah. And just booting along. Oh, it was amazing. So I never actually played this one. I'm going to be interested to play this one. Funny story. Uh, the sticker on the front, which I'm scared to take off, but it's actually saying it's there from Orange. Now, Orange was actually a company that I kind of worked for back in the day. Uh, it was actually a really tough gig that I did. I was actually selling computers and internet packages door to door with little success, mind you, other than the fact that I was buying it for myself. Uh, but on the side, we sort of sold, we're doing mobile phones. Uh, now, if you've never sold anything door to door, you'll know that that is a rough gig. And the fact that I actually sold any of those computer systems at all was a minor miracle. Uh, so I'm, you guys know, I don't really like keeping stickers on there, but like, that's got a bit of sentimental, not really. I hated that job. It's coming off. And the next game that came out was the Haunting Grounds on the PlayStation 2. Now I've heard a lot of really good things about this, that this is actually a bit of a diamond in the rough. Uh, so it's a survival horror game by Capcom and you actually take the role of a woman and her dog. Uh, so I actually really haven't seen that much about it, but I have seen on some YouTube channels that this is actually pretty good. So I thought I picked it up for, I think it was about $20. Uh, a guy on a Facebook group was doing a bit of a discount and that was there. And I was like, hold up. Can you hold on to that till PD? And he, I've bought off him before, so he was more than accommodating. So I'm actually quite tempted to play this game. Very tempted, actually. And with the newer games uh, that I picked up, I uh, picked up Lego City Undercover on the Nintendo Switch because, you know, you buy a console, you want games to play on it. 
Uh, the load times are terrible still, uh, but it's still actually a really fun game. I, I, I love... This is one of the only LEGO games I've really gotten into. I uh, never really got into much of the superhero ones or the Star Wars. Like, I did play them, but not to the extent of, like, 100%ing them or getting all the bricks and everything. But this one's really cool. It's a standalone story. Uh, it's actually the first game that they bought out to have their own story. I did lick it, and it does still taste disgusting. So... Word of the wise out there, guys, I don't think that bad taste is going anywhere. But this is a really cool game, uh, really fun, uh, funny game, and I do recommend it if you've got a Switch and you're looking for something new to play, even though Mario Kart's coming out today and I can't afford it. Maybe next week. And the last game of the week. The Outlast Trilogy Collect... Trinity... Trilogy. Well, it's a trilogy, yeah. Was very concerned that this actually wasn't going to be coming out in Australia because of uh, certain sexual scenes that uh, Australians don't do. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, we're put off by sex in this country. I've got Outlast and I've got Outlast Whistleblower over on the Xbox. Uh, I got them with the free games with gold and everything like that. Uh, so I was actually quite stoked that they did bring out this Trinity one and, and for the fact that... Uh, the Xbox One actually got delayed, so it's not coming out until next week, which is really weird. Uh, now, I'm scared shitless of these games. <laughs> like, I've tried playing the first one, and I was sitting there, and Mrs. Like, Mrs. Mikey will only really watch me play these horror games. And it's so funny, because I'll be, like, shooting myself, and she'll be like, Michael, stop it! It's actually quite funny. <laughs> oh, I wish she was going to be here tonight. But tonight, uh, I'm going to be streaming this, so I'm actually going to be playing it over on Twitch. So the link is down below, uh, twitch.tv forward slash madmikey. That's M-I-K-E-E-Y. -E uh, I'll be posting over on my socials when I'm about to go live. Uh, my friend will be here, so we'll both be going in fresh to this new one. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun. So guys, uh, if after you've watched this, you, you do feel the need to see a grown man shoot his pants, come by and say hi. But that's it for this week, guys. Um, I don't foresee there being a new episode for another couple of weeks. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I'm on a bit of a budget at the moment. Uh, there's just more important things. Um, but if I do find cheap games, obviously I do get them. Uh, I'll try and hope to God that there's some Mario Karts left next week when it comes to payday. But guys, that's it for this week. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, I'm Mad Mikey. I come from the bloody land down under. And I will see you next Tuesday for my gaming news opinions. Till then, guys, have a great weekend. And let me know what you're playing this weekend. Because I am interested. And we'll straddle it again. Oh, I've got a bit of room. <laughs>